Hello my fellow creative spirits. So today I am actually going to do a video where I explain how I come up with my reference drawings and give you a few tips on making your own reference drawings for say a uh, oil painting or an acrylic painting. So this is my method. Keep in mind that I am very loose with my method. I am always changing my method and always experimenting. This is just the method that I've been using lately. So just keep that in mind and just be fluid in your own style and always just do what you're comfortable with and what you enjoy. So I did get a few requests to do this video um, for a while now. So I decided to just share a few tips and if you guys have any questions feel free to leave that in the comments. And I'm going to try to do this video all in one go. So uh, I'm sorry ahead of time if I begin to ramble. So to begin with um, my first tip is that you have a basic understanding of anatomy and of portraiture and all of the different art styles. Try to have a sketchbook where you are constantly drawing foliage, that you're doing studies of people's faces, that you're doing live drawings, reference drawings off of references from online. Um, try to do Da Vinci style anatomy drawings as well. This will help you so much in the future and it will build your mental database for making reference pictures. So if you don't always have a reference that you can go by, you'll be able to pretty much make it up on the spot. And also understand how lighting works. So right when I'm jumping in, I wanted to make sure that I have a basic idea of the composition. So as you see in this video, I am kind of outlining exactly where I need everything to be. So as you can see, I start outlining where the dress is going to be. I'm outlining the position of her body while I'm looking at the reference picture. Now, just as another tip, before you actually start on your drawing, you do want to warm up. So I have a series of different sketchbooks that I practice my drawing in. I actually did a video about my drawings in high school, and that was actually a polished sketchbook. But I like to have various sketchbooks that I'm constantly working on. So I'll have one sketchbook where I do all of my scribble drawings, which is basically those in the moment I have an idea and I just want to get it out. And I just scribble it out and do stick figures and blobs. So very blob-like. I actually did a blob before I did this one. And then having your more polished sketchbook or going into an actual illustration paper and doing that. So this one was actually in my sketchy sketchbook. And then it just happened, I happened to like where it was going. I was taking my time on it, so I just decided to keep going with it in my messy sketchbook and just take it out later and then put it into a frame. So you're always welcome to do that in case you accidentally do something more polished in your messy sketchbook or do something more messy in your polished sketchbook. So don't stress out so much about your sketchbook. It's some place where you can have fun. Don't try to make everything polished all the time. Sometimes your most messiest pieces will be the most interesting and so just be in that comfort, uh, comfortable, relaxed state of mind and that's where the creativity will really flow because when you're trying to be a perfectionist so much, your, your ideas will be a lot more rigid and more stuck towards realism, which is completely fine. I think you should always practice realism alongside surrealism or any other type of um, art style that you're working on, but just always maintain that relaxed and playful state of mind. So once again here, just outline your composition, make sure that everything is going to be exactly where you want it to be, and start rendering out the details. But always begin with doing the composition and the lining and make sure that your proportions are right before you go into doing all of the little details. So. Here basically what I was doing is I'm just starting to render out the details of the rabbit and of her face and of her dress and just going and moving and flowing with it. Not completely rendering out one area before moving on to the next, though sometimes I do do that. It, it just really varies and it's just however you feel comfortable riding the creative wave, I guess you can say. So once you have a basic idea of where you want to go with this you do want to start looking at reference pictures to get the correct lighting. So just always being careful to maintain the right lighting. You're going to look for reference pictures that fit the, the, the style that you're working in and just kind of getting ideas from it. 
but don't copy exactly off of your reference pictures because that could lead to plagiarism. So here what I did, I actually made a pin board of various different references. So I'm going to actually link the pin board that I have for this particular image onto my description. So if you want to check out the different inspirations behind this piece and how I rendered it into my own uh, painting, feel free to do that. So basically what I did for this is I looked at different images. Um, the rabbit and also the caterpillar that's going to be coming in later was inspired by da Vinci's grotesque paintings. So I was looking at that to get the kind of grotesque features that I really wanted. And the body is from a stock image that I found online. Um, so I did that. I did change the outfit that the woman has. Just basically just getting the cross-legged pose and those arms is what I use for the reference there. And as far as all of the mushrooms that were, will come on uh, later on, they are also based on several different, just a huge compilation of different reference pictures of mushrooms in different positions. And as far as the foliage, this is where you want to have that mental database of different textures and also different foliages is because now you won't have to be so dependent on a reference picture every single time that you need to get something in there. So for example, the face I did completely out of my mind. Um, I have practiced with heads before so I kind of know the proportions and all of that. So definitely keep a sketchbook where you're always keeping track of all of the different ways that you can make heads and the measurements and all of that and always going back to it in rereading up on that so that you, you're able to do that pretty much freehand without having to look at a, at a reference every single time. So as an extra tip here, uh, I use a paper to just kind of block my hand from being able to smudge the rest of my paper. This helps to keep the paper a lot cleaner because if I have my hand just going over the, paint, the drawing, I mean, it's going to smudge everywhere. So have something that blocks your hand from being able to smudge everything. Another tip that you might notice that I'm doing here is I am actually layering the graphite. So instead of going in with one really, really um, dark graphite uh, pencil, what I'm doing is I'm layering. So I'll use the F pencil to do a light wash over the area and then going in with my darker pencils and just continue going over that because the thing is if you press down all in one layer you're going to make it where it's almost impossible to continue layering onto there so you'll you'll have a lot flatter of a surface as opposed to having that dimension if you do layers. Uh, something that I just recently found out actually about layering that I've been doing a lot lately is I use charcoal to do my darkest areas and I use H pencils for my lightest areas and I use F and B pencils for my darker areas as well. And another tip is to always keep your pencil very sharp. The sharpness of the pencil will give you much less of a grainy effect onto your drawing and it'll look a lot more cleaner. So I found that keeping my pencil sharp all the time even though I might use more of the pencil, it just results in a much nicer, much better rendered piece. Again, going back to knowing the basics of art, this is what helps so much and you will get a huge, huge advantage when you're drawing reference pictures for future drawings when you understand the basics. So back to what I was saying about having a sketchbook where you're learning about proportion and anatomy and all of the important elements of art. Um, I definitely recommend looking into even knowing color theory and composition because once you understand color theory, composition, and the basics, as much as you might think you might you know the basics, just going back and refreshing every once in a while and learning them and taking notes on it will help you so much in creating your own artwork. Take notes from the masters as well. Also a thing that you might notice that I do as I'm drawing, the farther I hold my pencil from the pencil tip, the more lighter and more free my strokes will be as opposed to if I hold the pencil really close to the end 
to towards the lead of the pencil, I have a lot more precision and I'm also able to go darker. So just keep that in mind. If you want ha to have more control, go closer to the tip of the pencil and the farther you will go, the more lighter and more free the strokes will be. Another tip is to use your favorite artist's inspiration. So by inspiration, uh, use this term very, very, very carefully because there is a thin line between inspiration and plagiarism. You want to make sure that you're staying as far away from plagiarism as possible. So a good way to do this is that you use elements of several different artists and even though you might use elements, don't exactly copy anything that you see from them. So for example, as I said, the grotesque face of Da Vinci, I'm using them, just elements of it. For example, the pronounced art, uh, eyebrows or the pronounced uh, wrinkles, for example. And as far as like composition, for example, this piece is inspired by the composition of an Annie Stegg painting, which has maybe, uh, it can parallel in that it's symmetri uh, symmetrical in a way, but at the same time not symmetrical. So just use the inspiration very sparingly and and over time you will get better at not relying on plagiarism or copying a piece exactly. In the beginning, if you are kind of doing studies of masters, that's completely fine. And in the beginning, you are taking more elements and it's harder for you to get elements from several different areas. That's okay. You know, it does take a lot of practice. Uh, you can kind of work your way slowly from realism into surrealism. So first you want to build up those realism skills and then from there move into surrealism or any other art style that you enjoy doing. Also in the beginning if you are practicing the work of the great masters it's very good practice to do this. For example if you want to copy kind of do studies of Da Vinci's work or any of the other old masters work. This will help you catch their habits and help you to build that mental database so you understand how art works, maybe even subconsciously without having to think about it. So you do want to be conscious about the different elements of art, but sometimes just practicing will help you get there and understand it without you even really realizing that you're practicing it. Now again, as I said, this is just my technique at the moment, but I'm always changing and with each piece it's completely different. So for this one, what I'm going to do after I finish this piece, I am going to put it onto Photoshop and digitally color it and then transfer that, use a projector to transfer my original sketch onto my canvas and then for my canvas I'm going to paint it using the digital, digitally painted picture as a reference. I like to figure out and digitally color something before I go into it just to avoid that, well, what color do I color it now phase of a painting. I do want to make sure that the colors are visually stimulating and I don't want to over, over saturate the painting with too many colors. This is where having a day, um, an understanding of color theory helps because you will know and understand and be able to experiment into Photoshop with what colors will be more interesting and more visually stimulating for the audience and more fun to do for you personally. The worst feeling is when you have a beautiful underpainting and then you go over it and you feel like you've messed it up because you've just put way too much colors on the canvas. Of course, colorful pieces are gorgeous as well. So it all depends up to your own personal, personal preference. For me, typically I like to limit my color palettes to no more than three colors. I try to anyways, but there are many, many cases where this just isn't the case. You can do as many colors as you want, honestly. There's no rules in art. Of course, you can learn the rules when you first start out and then learn to break them after you've learned them. I would also love to do a video about how I digitally scan picture, uh, digitally draw and color my pictures. So if you guys want to see that, please let me know and I can show you guys exactly how I make the Photoshop version of my reference picture. So for a different reference picture that I did, I actually just did the entire picture on Photoshop. So what I did was I took my own reference pictures of myself using my camera, my DSLR camera, and then after doing kind of like a photo shoot, I went into Photoshop, compiled everything, maybe through a couple of different stock images and just made it unrecognizable from the stock image but you know use like different 
blending and all of that and created my reference picture to my liking. Um, doing this is really fun too and then you have the reference picture a lot faster and you don't have to do the sketch. But I just love doing the sketch as well because it just gives me more practice rendering things out and then just going into Photoshop later and doing the digitalized version of the reference. But again, keep it fresh. Try it. Experiment with your different methods. Try doing ink drawing um, references. Try doing pencil drawing. Try doing purely digital reference pictures. So just experiment with it. You know, drawing and doing art is supposed to be fun. You're not supposed to stress out about it. So I hope that you guys enjoy doing art and creating and you're not sitting there and just stressing out and being in this really really rigid form of thinking because I've been there and my my art starts to um, fall apart and it's just when it doesn't feel fun anymore it's it's really hard to come up with fun concepts and all of that and have fun with it so my final tip is for you guys to slow down and enjoy. So this piece took a long time. I was going to do a real-time version of the sketch, but a <laughs> real-time of this sketch would have been hours upon hours upon hours long. Um, I don't know the exact number of hours that this took. I will have to see once I'm finished, but I know that it took a very long time. So this is actually sl not as fast as my usual time-lapse sketches because this one is 20 minutes long. Um, I will put some more on the screen now just so you guys can compare how fast it is compared to the real time. But doing it slowly and just enjoying it and being having a therapeutic outlook on drawing will help you do so much better and you'll just, every single time that you draw, you want to get slower and slower and render things out more. I think nothing has really changed as far as speed from when I first started other than I've been taking more time on each piece. Also, just keep your eyes on your reference as you're doing, for example, these mushrooms that I'm doing. Uh, I'm always looking at the reference to look at the lighting, to look at the details on the mushrooms. Um, the minute that I start to invent something just out of my head, it begins to form patterns that aren't there. So things aren't as patterned as your mind says it is. So, so my final tip that deals specifically with imagination and creativity more so than technical skill is to get inspiration from a variety of different sources. So you want to really enrich your life with a lot of creative experiences. So going to different performances, going to plays, watching different movies, listening to different albums of music, and kind of getting inspiration from those, and even watching films will help you a lot as well to capture say an image or a feeling or an emotion that you really want to capture and portray in your own artwork. So doing this is what I found to help me the most with creativity. So most of my inspiration doesn't necessarily come from other artists or other artwork. It'll come from those types of different things. And also have a sketchbook with you at all times because these inspirational moments are very rare. They're few and far between and you really want to capture them the moment that you get them and just write them down, scribble it out, make it as rough and messy as you want to, but just so that you have that it's kind of like your own database of different ideas that you do want to eventually turn into artwork because there will be times that you will be idea dry and you will want to go back to these and just be able to have something to work on until your next idea comes. So that is my biggest inspiration. A lot of times I'll be half asleep when an idea comes from comes to me and I'll just scribble out as fast as I can. Um, so that's kind of my tip for being inspired and being motivated. You won't always be motivated and inspired and a lot of these times will just come to you at random moments and you want to take advantage of that. So besides that, I hope that my tips were kind of helpful to you guys as you create your own references and create your own artwork. Uh, if you have any questions or any any of your own tips for creating references or your own technique, please leave that in the comments. I love reading your comments. I'm so sorry if it takes a little while to get back to you guys. Um, things have been a little bit busy, but I still read your comments and they always make my day. You guys are the sweetest people I've ever met. and. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video again. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it and would like to see more. 
And also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of my works in progress. And you guys kind of get uh, exclusive, uh, exclusive content on there as opposed to waiting for my videos. So don't forget to do that. And also like my Facebook page. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!